by the way that Brexit has been done to my country without its permission. But there is hope. But to realise that hope will require courage. Because the fact of the matter is that the only way back into the European Union for Scotland is if we regain our statehood and regain our independence. Because only, only by doing that can we ensure that we are in charge of our country's destiny. If the last three and a half years uh, since the Brexit vote in England have taught us anything, they've taught us the limitations of devolution. And that devolution is not enough to prevent our country, our society, our economy, and our culture suffering the damage of Brexit. Now, it is quite clear that the Scottish Government have a mandate to hold another independence referendum. Both from the people who voted in previous elections and as a result of the vote in our Parliament behind you yesterday afternoon. And it was very pleasing yesterday to see an opinion poll from YouGov putting independence in the lead for the first time in a YouGov poll since 2015. And today I was pleased to hear the First Minister mention in her statement proposals to increase support for independence and to bring with us those who are not yet uh, convinced. And I very much welcome the recognition of the requirement for a constitutional convention to reach out beyond the political parties. I hope to civic society and the people of this great country. And I also welcome the First Minister's recognition that it is by no means clear that the parliament behind us doesn't have the means to hold an advisory referendum. And I'm looking forward to discussing that with the First Minister in due course. How independence will come about is not as yet clear, and a degree of patience will be required, and we must put our faith in the leadership of the country and our First Minister, who is the leader of the country. But we must also remember, always, and we must reiterate, that this is not our Brexit. This is not Scotland's Brexit. And we must contrast the way in which the Republic of Ireland is treated by the European Union with the way in which Scotland is treated in the United Kingdom. And because of the situation in which we now find ourselves, those politicians who say that we should stop talking about independence and get on with the day job are wrong. Of course we must get on with the day job, but we must also get on with protecting our country from Brexit, because it didn't vote for it and it's bad for it. And so, to talk about independence and to advance the cause for independence is the constitutionally responsible thing to do. Now, in relation to Boris Johnson, who uh, seems to think that he can turn his face against the tide of Scottish public opinion, I would say to him that his intransigence is doomed, and indeed history shows that such intransigence doesn't work. And I would simply end by quoting the words of the great Irish constitutional nationalist, Charles Stuart Parnell. And in his words, I would say to Boris Johnson, no man has the right to set the boundaries of the march of a nation. Thank you.
Okay, thanks uh, very much there to Joanna Cherry. Uh, because we started a little late, our order has changed it a wee bit. Can I just say if there are people here from the Yes Choir or the Indie Choir, can they get themselves up here? Because we don't know if you're here unless you're in front of us. Right, but who is in front of us next is Scotland's Brexit Minister, Mike Russell. So this is going to be the Oh, How's it going down there? Is there a bit of a change from the uh, EU? Oh, it's parallel universe uh, to the whole of our realities. Uh, it's a dreadful thing. Uh, yeah. uh, what's, uh, what's the situation? Um, in the, the Sun the other day, there, it was mentioning that um, the SNP covered up the Muslim rape gangs. What was that all about? It's complete it's nonsense. It's made up? Of course it is. So they didn't just covered up anything? It's not been, so there wasn't any? I, was I don't know one way or the other, well, but was, if it was in the sun, that's No, no, first, well, I was at the actual engagement. demos just covering it. It was the Scottish Defence League. Right. And uh, the SNP, because they obviously control the police, didn't allow any sort of um, uh, access to me as a journalist going to speak to the people who are holding the, the, the demo. So all of the, the police were actually blockading it. So I've got it on tape and uh, they, they did actually at the demo. And then there was big massive protests that, that uh, weren't. Well, I don't know anything about that. Uh, uh, did, did, did sounds, Amza, sounds nonsense to me. Does Amza Yusuf know anything about it, did you think? It's just the secretary, so uh, uh, well, Thank you, thank you very much. Hi, John. Hi Joanna, congratulations on getting to back again to Parliament. Uh, did, no, I don't uh, want to speak to you. Why do you not want to speak to me? Go away. We're doing another Go video away. interview. Can I just Thank, ask you, what, Thank you. What, what happened to the million pounds for the Scottish Joanna. stock market, Joanna? Just, what happened to the Scottish stock market? I don't care. Uh, yeah, I think that that's very rude. I don't mind if it's rude. Joanna, what happened to the million pounds for the Scottish stock market? Don't touch. Don't touch. No. Hey brother, will you go and play with the traffic? Because I'll tell you to go and play. Will you? I fucking chew my Well, that's very violent. Look, you're going live in the dinner, mate. Ah, well, go me and Dick. Watch that lady there. Well, don't back up to us. I'm not harassing you. I'm asking you questions, Joanna. Oh, well, I'm being good stuff. Yeah, I have not, nobody's warned me, Joanna, apart from you. So, that's very interesting. I think we'll get that up on the internet just now. Very, very worrying sort of not prepared to ask any questions Oof, very very bad that's joanna cherry for you that's what happens guys just now in scotland Oof. it can't really be independent in europe it's a bit of a political oxymoron so they're not prepared to answer any questions that relate to um, where happened to a million pounds for the Scottish stock market. Joanna Cherry saying she told me so where she kicked me out of her office. All, all, my record, all the, the interactions with Joanna Cherry has all been recorded. So uh, there's nothing that uh, she's done that uh, is not already up on the internet. And we can all see that it's Joanna Cherry that's a problem, not anybody else. So they're not actually, so they don't want to control the press. They want to have a controlled opposition. And whether or not the SNP are going to change to, we call themselves a Scottish globalist party instead of a Scottish nationalist party, uh, then we don't, we don't know. Uh, officer, is there a liaison officer here? Liaison officer. Uh, officer. What's the situation with... Uh, uh, I've seen you before. Have you watched? Fantastic. I'm, I'm very famous. I'm on the, I'm a, a, I'm on the, I'm in the movies. Anyway, right. uh, what's the situation with uh, the, the, this facing me? Uh, what's the situation with uh, asking MPs? Is me asking you a question harassment? Um, I <laughs> so I, I possibly come and tell that. No, no. I need to know the law. I need to know if, if, if yeah, I, if I. Tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, the sergeant? Is the sergeant? Do you mind if, Who's the sergeant? 
you, Sergeant, uh, can I ask you a question? Um, this is, uh, you're not on, uh, this is me on. But you're still recording, aren't you? Uh -huh. Just so about... No, I'm, I'm recording me, I'm recording me. Uh, is actually speaking to somebody and asking questions, if you're a journalist, harassment? Under the law, uh, if I ask a question uh, to a politician, can that be construed as harassment? Because we're not... Questions are asking. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm just asking for the principle. If I ask a question, can that be construed as harassment? Well, I'm not threatening anybody, so it's just a, it's just me asking questions about topics that are relevant uh, to the person's position. So, so perception. So you can, if you perceive a question to be harassment, even though it's a question about a topic, that can be seen as harassment by the police. Right. But it's all recorded on my interaction. Or or but that's back to my point. So my question is just a generic one about the law. It's, not, it's not generic. You can't ask a generic question. So it's, it's, it can be. So it can merit. be harassment if I actually ask a politician questions without making any threats or anything else. No threats. Not nothing else about questions about policy. Can that be construed as harassment? Each case is taken on its own merits. You've had your answer, that's the uh, that. Okay, these officers have got things to do, so thank you very okay, much. Okay, that's great, thank you very much. So, very interesting. So, I think that's very worrying in the, st the state of the affairs, isn't it? I'm going to cut it off there. You can see the sort of crowd. In fact, Thank <laughs> you.